and welcome. I'm Ijeoma Onyato. Tonight, President Muhammadu Buhari seeks support for the International Criminal Court in the fight against corruption and illicit financial flows. AKT State Governor Ayodele Fayoshe makes first public appearance after his party lost to the ruling All Progressives Congress during last Saturday's governorship election in the state. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo visits victims of Katsina flood and shows the federal government support as NEMA begins distribution of relief materials. And U.S. President Donald Trump reverses comment over poll meddling after outrage from Americans, including his supporters. On business news tonight, Bank of Industry explains syndicated $750 million loan deal with African Export Import Bank for micro, small and medium enterprises. And on sports news tonight, world football governing body FIFA nominates Super Eagle striker Ahmed Musa's second goal against Iceland among 17 other goals for the goal of the 2018 World Cup. Hello and from Abuja, President Muhammad Buhari sent supplementary budget to National Assembly, seeks transfer of 228 billion naira from inserted projects to fund the 2019 elections and critical projects. We begin tonight with President Muhammad Buhari's call on state parties to support the International Criminal Court with jurisdiction over corruption and illicit financial flows by state actors. The President made this demand while delivering the keynote address at the solemn hearing to commemorate the 20th anniversary of the Rome Statute in the ICC. The President also promised the international community that his administration is committed to free, fair and peaceful general elections in Nigeria in 2019. Our correspondent, Raulua Shonibare, examines the president's visit to The Hague. An interesting thing of note about President Muhammad Buhari's trip to the Netherlands is that he is the only head of state to be invited to the 20th anniversary of the International Criminal Court. And he's making the most of the visit with several meetings already in the bag. From the Prime Minister of Holland to Dutch CEOs and Nigerians living in that country, the president has also visited the Shell refinery and the port of Rotterdam, once regarded as the world's busiest port. Here, the head of the Nigeria Port Authority speaks on the objectives of this for the Nigerian government. So we're discussing with them on how they can provide a certain um, technical knowledge on their concession agreements that exist with their terminal operators, and the same way Nigeria too has similar relationship with their terminal operators. The climax of the trip is undoubtedly this opportunity presented to President Buhari to address the court. Congratulating the 123 members on the milestone of 20 years, President Buhari reminds the gathering of the reason it was established, which is to fight injustice in any form. And to him, corruption is a vice that leads to other crimes. A strong and effective international criminal court has the potential to send a powerful message about the international community's commitment to accountability, a message that will be heard by both victims and perpetrators. Equally, a strong and effective international criminal court demonstrates the international community's commitment to the rule of law. President Buhari knows the importance of the upcoming general elections in Nigeria to the African continent and assures that Nigeria will strive to better the 2011 election, which the president admits was marred and necessitated investigations by the ICC. Changing the perception of the world towards Nigeria's image is a major objective of the federal government. And this trip may be one that increases the momentum of that plan. Oralu Ashonibare, Channels Television News. Well, the governor of AKT is asking for a breather after the governorship election held on Saturday. Governor Fayoshe, who appeared in public for the first time today after Saturday's election, says his freedom has been inhibited by security operatives, whom he alleges stripped him of his security detail and maltreated his party members. 
The governor visited the monarch of the state capital, Adokiti, in his palace, where he called for intervention by stakeholders for him and his family members to enjoy their peace and privileges. If we have been robbed, we must still have a right to life. I need a right to life. My family needs a right to life. Blocking the government house, all the entrances up until this morning were blocked since last Friday till now. Till this morning. I don't understand why it should be like this. The man that contested against me is being protected, has over two, three units of policemen guiding his house. I, as the sitting governor, as no single policeman in the government house, they were withdrawn, they've been withdrawn since last Wednesday, and they were kept at the police headquarters till now. Meanwhile, the controversy that's been trailing the Akiti governorship election is yet to die down as the two leading political parties in the election are still trading words. A worrisome part of the controversy is the incident of vote buying by both parties before and during the election. They're accusing each other of engaging in the undemocratic practice of influencing voters' decisions with money. The PDP started vote two days before the election. They were sending money. Every voter in Ekiti, you know, engaged in this uh, photocopying of voters' card that we all cry, we cried out about it. Now, he sent money to all the voters. And they came to tell us that these people, they have bought all the votes already. Now we now said, oh, what are we going to do? If PDP is buying votes and these people the issue is they will not keep on asking you for money. Somebody started buying votes. You do not expect me to sit back. If I, if I know this guy has rigged me out of this election, so I should now say that those people requesting that, okay, somebody has paid me 4,000 naira, And we now say, okay, oh, sorry, I don't have money. And so please, go and vote for him. Senator, would that be an election? Did they arrest any member of PDP sharing money on, on the election day? The answer is a capital no. All the people that were jailed, all the people that were driving around in SUVs and sharing money, all the people that parked buses at the polling centers were all members of the All Progressives mm -hmm. Congress. And I challenge them to Arise to state here clearly, to state here now openly, we are on air, and say that a particular member of PDP was arrested on the day of the election on July 14th, the Saturday, sharing money. Mm -hmm. Norm, APC came and campaigned on a platform of change. That whatever PDP was doing, that they considered that as negative, they were going to improve on that. They didn't tell Nigerians, they didn't tell the people of Ikiti State that they were coming to do a worse form of democratic abuses mm. that PDP did. And staying with politics, the Senate President, Dr. Bukala Saraki, has asked his supporters to be patient as he will soon disclose his future political moves to them. He stated this while responding to questions from journalists at the Ilori International Airport on his first visit to Kwara State after his victory at the Supreme Court over the Code of Conduct Tribunal trial for false assets declaration. The Senate President was received by many of his supporters who were on hand to welcome him. fathers, leaders, uh, uh, religious leaders and our supporters uh, for the support that they've given and we thank for the victory, uh, for the fact that the truth revealed and justice was done. Well sir, many Nigerians are desirous to know your future political ambition. Are you contesting for the presidency? Are you defecting to PDP? Today I've come here to, today is a day for me to one or two visits want to more importantly thank my people for the support they've given me for for the years. As I always say to a lot of people, there's no a time a time will come for everything. A time will come I'll tell people where I am, what I'm doing and exactly. For now it's really to thank the people of the state because the last three years have been tough and they stayed committed. They stayed with me and uh, I have to appreciate that. 
to other stories now. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, today visited victims of Sunday's flash floods in Kasina State to commiserate with them and the state government over their losses. The Vice President was accompanied by the Katsina State Governor, Aminu Belu Mazari, to areas affected by the flood in Jibia, local government area of the state. Professor Oshibajo gave the assurance that the federal government will collaborate with the Katsina State Government and NEMA to compensate victims. No fewer than 40 persons died from the flash floods, which swept several communities in Jibia, local government area of the state, destroying property and leaving many residents homeless. I'm still talking about floods, but this time a heavy downpour in Bini City, the Edo State capital, has claimed the life of a six-year-old girl who was on her way back from school on Monday. Residents blame the open drainage system for the tragedy, calling it a death trap, and the director of the Edo State Fire Service cautioned against trying to move on foot in flooded areas. He explains that it's safer to wait for the floods to abate before leaving. The ever busy five junction roundabout at the Yaro Salu exits of the Benin metropolis. The road barricaded with stones and bonfires by protesting youths during the rush hour. They are angry over the alleged death of a six year old girl, Victoria Baranti, in an open drainage system in the area following the heavy downpour that hit Benin City, the Edo State capital, on Monday. A woman and her baby was coming during the rain. They fell into this death trap that they call gutter. Death trap. So one other man was able to rescue the woman. The mother of the girl confirmed she held her daughter in her hand before she was taken away by the flood. When I fall like that, she fall too. So when I want to get to, to pick her back, the erosion now a bridge going inside that brain and that drag going inside the hole back and I'm, I follow her to, because we are calling mommy mommy by day I follow her to that hole me said I don't, I don't even know what is happening again and I'll be shouting go apple apple my baby have entered inside that hole maybe I've get to that bridge oh. I will not see anybody to help me. The recovery of Victoria Baranti's cops may not be possible till a few more days. The director at those state fire service, Franklin Agmolaho, explains why. If the flood was stagnated and the area is overflooded and is congested with flood, we will be able to disperse with a floating pump. The environment you are trading and is overflooded. Let us try as much as possible to calm down. Seek refuge where we are safe. If that flood is dispersed completely, you cannot have your way back home. The country is in the peak of raining season and chances are there is more rainfall in the coming weeks. And everybody must brace up and adjust accordingly. Osazobaza Channels, Television News. To security matters, gunmen have attacked a police patrol team along the Meridian Gwari Funtua Road in Kaduna State, killing at least two policemen during the gun battle. The spokesman of the Kaduna State Police Command, Mukta Aliu, says the police patrol team was ambushed on Monday night by the gunmen at Tabani Village in Meridian Gwari, which later resulted in casualties on both sides. According to him, two of the gunmen were killed and one AK-47 rifle was recovered from them while two police officers also lost their lives in the incident. Mr. Liu, however, disclosed that a woman was killed accidentally when some aggrieved police officers who conveyed the corpses of their late colleagues to the state police command on Tuesday morning started shooting sporadically in the air in protest against the death of their colleagues.